Mike Demerges here in Los Angeles, California. We have a very special guest, former NFL football player and college star at Memphis and Kent State. And last but not least, a gold medal winner in track and field from the 1972 Munich Games, Mr. Gerald Tinker. Gerald, thank you so much for giving me a few minutes today. And uh, certainly in our conversations before this interview, you seem like a very interesting person. Well, thank you very much. Um, I've seen a lot and I've been involved in a lot of different things in life and uh, I came out okay. Let's, before we get to current day, let's start where you grew up in Coral Gables, Cal, in Florida, and mm -hmm. you were a, a high school football star where you were, your team won, uh, won some championships. They were the myth, mythical national champs in 1967, 68, and 69, and they were said to be Florida Athletic a Association Team of the Century in 1968. And talk about uh, your running back during those years in Florida and before you became a receiver returner in the NFL. But talk about the, the running back days play, playing in Florida. Well, you know, in high school, uh, playing running back is, is just a position where you just run scared. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you get the ball and you, don't try, and you try to avoid being hit. And I could do that well because I, I could run pretty fast. And I did a lot of running and I did a lot of ducking. Now you claim that you used to run the 40 and 4.1, is that correct? Uh, that is very correct. Mm -hmm. um, the um, Dallas Cowboys sent their combine team down to uh, Kent State, and they timed me. They got a 1.41 and 2.42s on 40-yard dash, which is the fastest time in, uh, in uh, fo football history. So you're running track and field, and you're playing football uh, down in Florida here, so you're getting a lot of attention from colleges and the NFL as well, and your selection was to go play at Memphis. Yeah, I, had, I was the most sought after athlete in 1969 in, uh, in the country, and uh, ended up going to Memphis State. And talk about first going there, you were the first black player to receive a scholarship from there? I was first black football player on scholarship at Memphis State University, yes. And this is 21 years after Jackie Robinson, 1968, playing for them. What was it like being the first black player to play on scholarship in Memphis? And what are some of the things you went through? Well, I tell you, it, it, was, it wasn't a surprise to me because uh, uh, I was the first black kid in the city of Miami in the boys club, in the Southwest Boys Club. The, South, the same boys club where Ellis Rodriguez uh, rebuilt, the, rebuilt the club after he made his millions of dollars. So I was the first black kid there, and uh, you know, to go to Carl Gables was the first graduating team, uh, first graduating class of blacks from Carl Gables Senior High School. So going to an uh, institution where you're the first and being black is, is not unfamiliar territory to me. Now, of course, the 1960s were a very tumultuous time for this country, um, but sports was a way of of sort of bringing things together. We saw it in music with Motown, where white people listened to music that was coming out of Detroit, Michigan, uh, but also sports as a way of bringing people together. Did you experience any forms of racism during your time at Memphis? Well, yes, I did, unfortunately. You know, um, me being the first black dad, there was a lot of things that I confronted. <clears throat> one was uh, my teammates got together one day in the lunchroom. Uh, Walter Deggett cha chaired the uh, activities to uh, throw me out the dormitory. And I don't know if it was fueled by a confrontation that was had uh, between uh, the basketball team, because the, the bottom floor on the basketball team was all black, black guys living on the first floor. And uh, they had lost the game, I believe, and uh, they came into the dormitory and it was pretty noisy that night about 12 o'clock. And a guy by the name of Ray Jamison uh, <clears throat> yelled out a window, give me some of that damn noise out there. And a guy by the name of Jesse Buckman said, well, come down here and get some. But Jesse Buckman was known for carrying a, 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 a rusty knife. And uh, so it happened that he got in a confrontation with Jameson, and Jameson got cut all over his body. I saw him the next door in the locker room. And I, I don't know what happened to Jesse Buckman, but Jesse Buckman was gone after that night. I never saw Jesse Buckman again. And up to this day, I've yet to hear what, what happened to Jesse Buckman. But I know he was gone out of Memphis State the next morning. How did the school react to the violence on the campus? Well, you know, it's, it's like a silence, a silence way of, of, of handling things, you know. I think they kind of handled it in-house. Mm -hmm. You know, they did it in-house, and uh, 
I don't know what happened exactly, but uh, I know it, it was clean and clear and uh, that it wasn't going to be tolerated and uh, never heard from Jesse Buckman again. And, and talk about the relationship you had with some of your teammates. Did you have a feeling that there was any racism forming on the team at all? Well, um, um, you know, I, I, we had a couple of guys that were Indians that were on the team. And uh, we had a few other guys that were Mexicans. And they kind of, uh, we, we kind of like melded it together. Uh, spent a lot of time together with one another because we both were minorities. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a, one friend who was a quarterback. I wouldn't say I was a friend of his name, Rick Strawberry. You know, he was a nice guy. And there was uh, a couple of other guys that I can't really remember right now, but uh, I, I can't say I had some great relationships with the guys on the team there. Did you know this was forming, though, as far as them wanting to have you off the team? Did you know that was gonna that was starting and that took you totally by surprise? It totally hit me by surprise. I didn't know that. You know, I played with these guys two years already, and they knew I could play ball and I could play it pretty good. I didn't expect this to happen. This caught me completely off guard. Um, on the field, did you experience any forms of racism on the field? Well, I don't know if you can call it racism or not, but I, I being that I was the only guy that um, had been given a scholarship that was black on the football team, I understood that uh, a lot of one of the ways of how they got rid of blacks who came out to play uh, for Memphis State in the city was to run them hard and to run them hard and and make them make them quit by just running them. And this one guy, uh, Stan Davis, Stanley Davis, one day he grabbed his side and he was bent over and he was telling the coach how bad he was hurting. He was telling the coach Smoot Murphy how bad he was hurting. And Coach Murphy kept saying, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, get it together. Let's run. We can do better than that. He, he ended up having an emergency appendectomy done that day. And he never played again for, for Memphis State University. I saw that, and I thought that was totally wrong. I thought they should have done something for Stan. Stan was a pretty, pretty good football player, and he would be one of the players that would stand out on our team. And I thought they would give him the attention that he would need, and he didn't get it at Memphis State, and I, and I really felt bad about that for him, you know, because, uh, you know, all the things they were doing for me to make me feel at home, they weren't doing it for somebody who was from Memphis, and like they said, the way they ran them off was to just run them, run them off by running, overrunning them, and that's what happened to Stan. So you finish up your second year at Memphis, and what made you decide to go to uh, Kent State? Well, uh, coach came down and uh, uh, asked me would I be interested in going to Kent State University. I had never heard of Kent State University. And I said, sure, you know, why not? I mean, here's a, a school that's interested in, and I was interested in staying in college. So two weeks later, I uh, packed my bags and I left with to, to Kent State, go to Kent State. And Kent State turned out to be just like high school football. Everybody had a, this loving, experience, a loving and family experience going on, and I was a part of that.